お嬢様。Hello, my lords and ladies, Joe here. Today I'll be reviewing chapter 1060 of One Piece, Luffy's Dream. Last week was the best chapter we've gotten in One Piece for ages. Let's see if we can keep riding this wave. One Piece got the jump cover this week with a colorization of Gear 5th. Ugh. The most divisive thing in One Piece being front and center. Not the best way to start out the week, but okay. One Piece has a color spread this week. My first reaction to this was Hey, hey, I've seen this one. I've seen this one. This is a classic. And it's kind of neat to see it updated. But to be honest, I feel like this was one of the few color spreads that works with an update. The original had a lot of white space, so there was room to fill. Also, I kind of like the older color spreads because they are kind of like a time capsule of One Piece, of how it was when they were made. I mean, One Piece color spreads already revisit themes from time to time, so it won't really be necessary to update the other ones. But I don't know, maybe there are some spreads that could work with an update. We'll just have to wait to see if this happens again. Luffy and crew finally get the news about Sabo, Cobra, and Vivi. Nice to know that Luffy has more faith in Sabo than Dragon did. Considering that Dragon has practically raised Sabo and should know him much more than Luffy. But I mean, we all knew Sabo didn't do it. I can't even call the allegation a red herring. It was just fake news. Luffy, being Luffy, wants to head straight to Alabasta. And Zoro, being Zoro, says no. But wait, Caribou is on the ship? And it definitely doesn't look like he snuck on. It looks like they took him with them. I guess they didn't want to leave him in Wano, but did they think that prison time for Caribou was too much? It's not like Wano is in short supply of sea stone. I guess it would be a little weird for Wano, who knows nothing about Caribou, to imprison him. So I guess my question is what are they planning to do with him? Drop him off on an abandoned island? Keep him around as a prisoner? I know plot wise where this is going. He's going to escape. Take all that info he's picked up and deliver it to someone who is probably Blackbeard. But I don't get what the Straw Hats are planning on doing with him. Everyone has a take on the Alabasta situation. But the one that I found kind of funny is Brooke. He says, I haven't known anyone to hate how Alabasta was run. Brooke, you've been lost at sea for 50 years. I doubt Cobra is even king when you were originally sailing. And Salty Luffy still getting bent out of shape about Buggy. What an elitist snob. And then Robin starts teasing that there's even more information out there, but decides not to talk about it because Luffy's pea brain can't handle it. Damn it, Robin, I want to hear about what's going on. Whatever. Then Luffy says his dream. The same one that was muted back in his ace flashback. I know it isn't to be king of the pirates, because why not just say that? But I mean, it feels a little weird that the catchphrase of I'm going to be king of the pirates isn't Luffy's dream. To be honest, I'm a little worried about this. Look at these reactions to what Luffy said. Luffy even said it made Shanks cry. Uh, that's a pretty big reaction. Even some on his crew doubt he can do it. Practically all of them are laughing. So, like, what is it? Is he going to turn himself into a pickle or something? I am really worried that this is writing a check that Oda won't be able to cash. It also feels a little rotten to have a chapter called Luffy's Dream. And we learn literally nothing about it. So, Sabo is hanging out in Lulucia. Okay, for those of you who don't quite get the coincidence here, when Ace was searching for Blackbeard, he came to Lulucia. So, Sabo being here is a bit ironic. And it seems that Sabo saw him and knows the truth about the not so empty throne. And then the island is completely destroyed. With the world government already saying that Lulucia never existed. Well, I guess we know what happened to God Valley. This is like a super buster call. 
Whatever this thing is in the sky, it's probably the last ancient weapon, Uranus. But boy howdy do I have some questions about this thing. If the world government has such a powerful weapon, and they know where the rebels are, why didn't they use that to destroy them? Also, how are they going to go through with this Lulucia never existed BS? Like the levelly just happened. The king was there, everyone saw him. Having the private island of the Terabito wiped out is one thing, but this was a full blown kingdom and part of the world government. There's a marine base very close to this island. What, every soldier is just going to go along with that? Is there some mind wiping device to this as well? It would have been smarter if they just said something bad happened to it, like a natural disaster. But considering the world government's modus operandi with, you know, the Buster Call, Impaled Downs Level 6, the Void Century, just pretending things doesn't exist seems to be their style. Anyway, Sabo seems to be caught up in the blast, but we all know he's not dead. This is one piece after all. This is the consequence of constant death fakeouts. The tension of a character seemingly dying has no effect anymore. I'm guessing maybe the Marimaranomi has some form of flight, and maybe that's how he gets away. But what I'm really concerned about is Moda. Is Milk Maiden Moda dead? Nah, this is One Piece. In fact, everyone on the island is probably fine. Anyway, it looks like the Straw Hats have saved Jewelry Bonnie. Now, I have a motto with One Piece. Ask me any hypothetical question about the series, and most likely my answer will be Bonnie. Who has the best devil fruit? Who's the best waifu? Wait, if Bonnie was in water, would that make this her actual age? Uh-oh. Anyway, I'm glad to see her, cause she's still a real mystery. I want to know how she got there, I want to know more about her past, I want to know about her relationship with Kuma, I want to know more about what her fruits can do, and I hope we get it. So overall, an alright chapter. It was pretty cool to see what I am fairly certain is Uranus's power, always glad to see Bonnie. But there were so many head-scratching questions in this chapter that it kept it from really excelling. Three out of five stars. Well, we still don't know about Weevil's status. Not that anyone cares. Still, I have optimistic hope for next week, with Bonnie becoming a more central character. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the world of tomorrow.